welcome to my channel, The Sunday Cook, here on Instagram. Um, it's such a great pleasure to have you in our in my little tiny kitchen. Ta da! This is my tiny kitchen, and um, and hopefully by the end of today's episode. And by the way, guys, t today is uh, the very very first episode of my cooking masterclass which will be taking place every Thursday at 12.30 um, every week. And so uh, to start this episode off, what I thought I'd do is I'd ask, because a lot of us get into that same predicament where you go into your refrigerator in the evenings or for lunch and you, you want to go and make something but you have no idea what you're going to make and you open your refrigerator and you, you have a look inside and you're like, oh, I've got this, I've got that, what do I do with them? Or you'll look into your, your pantry, your pantry cupboard and the same story. You'll find some random ingredients that you've had in there and you'll not know what to do with them. So this earlier this week, I sent out a message to all of my followers on Instagram and on YouTube and I asked you, the, audi the, um, the audience, what five ingredients do you have in your refrigerator or in your store cupboard at the moment that you just simply don't know what to do with? Um, and um, a lot of you have been sending them in, so thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Um, I've had some really interesting, some really interesting um, ingredients actually come through my inbox. Um, one of the one of my followers sent me. Uh, a list and it only had two ingredients which were rice and canned chicken. I had no idea canned chicken was even a thing. <laughs> so I was discovering something new as well. Um, so out of all of the people that have submitted, I've selected for today's first episode um, the ingredients list that uh, Jessica Hallam, if you're here, uh, welcome. I've picked your ingredients for today's episode, and let me show them to you. Ta -da! So, I'm gonna move my camera a little bit so you can see. Yep. Okay. So the ingredients that um, Jessica submitted to me were actually, not all of these, but they were actually um, mushrooms, dark soya sauce, some basmati rice, eggs, and pistachios. And so what I thought I'd do today is uh, actually two dishes. So I'll be making a little spin on a kedgeri. A kedgeri is a rice dish, a rice-based dish, which actually came from uh, colonial Britain. And it's comprised of eggs, uh, poached eggs on top. It's served with a poached egg on top. Normally it's served with um, a flaky haddock or cod. I've made it with cod before. And it's uh, a blend of of spices that you would find um, typically in Indian cuisine. So I'll be making that. And I'll also be making some um, stuffed mushrooms utilizing the uh, these pistachio nuts. And I spent all morning de-shelling de these pistachio nuts. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so those two dishes are, can be served together if you wanted to, or the first dish, which will be the stuffed mushrooms with pistachio, um, they can be served as a little, um, a little snack or even, uh, to put on top of your kedgeri, or it can be served as a little entree or starter. Um, it's up to you really, but, um, yeah, I hope that you like it. So let's get started. So just to recap on the ingredients I've got about, and what I'm going to do is I will put the, the full ingredients list as well as the method, uh, the method, uh, the recipe in the edited version. 
Hi Jess. Ah, speaking of which, <laughs> hi Jessica. Welcome, welcome to my tiny kitchen. It's so nice of you to to join us. So Jessica was the follower who had submitted um, a range of ingredients, and uh, there they are. So I've got the mushrooms, Jessica. I've got eggs, I've got basmati rice, I've got some dark soya sauce, and I've got the pistachio nuts. Um, and do you know what? It was so funny because yesterday, <laughs> okay, so yesterday when I went looking for pistachio nuts, I was thinking, do you know what? I don't think I'll find any, um, but hey, they had tons of it. The only thing I couldn't find were um, things like flour, um, they ran out of milk, so I don't know. Anyways, so um, because you've just joined Jessica, I was just saying to, the, to, to everyone what I'll be making. So I will be making two dishes with your ingredients. I'll be making a kedgeri, uh, which is based on the basmati rice, and I'll be using some of the pistachio nuts and then a whole bunch of spices. Then I will be making, and then I'll also be making some stuffed mushrooms, um, also using the the pistachio nuts as well as the other ingredients. On top of the ingredients that you submitted, Jessica, I've also added some more. So I've got some fresh coriander. I've got some fresh mint, and I've got an onion as well as garlic. In my little plate down here, these are my spices that I'm going to be using for the kedgeri. Um, so I've got cinnamon bark, I've got some turmeric, cumin, some dried ginger, two bay leaves, two star anise. These things, I love them. They're so good. They smell, mm, they smell, I wish this had smell of vision. Can you? Um, but they're delicious. And then I've got a red a red chili. I've also got some smoked paprika. This is I'm gonna use that as a flavor flavor in the stuffing of the mushrooms. I've got um, some butter, a lemon. So the lemon is for my poached egg that's gonna sit on top of the kedgeri. Unfortunately. When I went looking for white wine and vinegar, I can find any because apparently everybody's been looking for white wine. So, you know, <laughs> so I'm using lemon instead. And then I've got here some curry powder. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to be doing are the stuffed mushrooms. And the reason why we're starting with that is because part of the filling, the stuffing that's going to go into my mushroom is actually going to be used also for this little crispy crumb that I'm going to sprinkle on top of the finished kedgeri. Uh, for those of you who have just joined, today is the first episode of um, my Thursday weekly ma cooking master class. The ingredients that I've you that I'm that I've selected from all of the ingredients that you have submitted, and thank you so much, guys, um, are the ingredients that Jessica Hallam had submitted. So I'm going to be making stuffed mushrooms and a kedgeri. Okay, brilliant. So I'm going to move my ingredients to one side. Now I want to show you just how tiny my kitchen is, so you can get a feel before I, yeah. So this is <laughs> the kitchen, um, minuscule. So uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm using my, my, mobile, my mobile phone for this. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun. So I'm just gonna move this to one side. This is where you really value counter space. I'm always really jealous when I see people's counter spaces. I'm like, wow, I want that. Okay, right. So I've got my chopping board ready. So the first thing that we're gonna do is, oops, I'm gonna switch off, switch on my oven, preheat it. <clears throat> So, I'm 
I'm going to start prepping my mushrooms first. So the first thing I want to do before I, um, I, before I start using the mushrooms, what you want to do is you want to grab a pastry brush and you want to brush all of your mushroom, your, your entire mushroom, because oftentimes, uh, especially if you buy them from, not so much from the supermarket, but if you buy them from a farmer's market, for example, they often come with a little bit of grit, uh, if they've been picked wild or, so you want to get, grab a brush and then you just want to, um, brush them to get rid of that grit. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to wash them in water because mushrooms are like sponges and they will absorb and then they will go soggy and then when you're trying to brown them and get them all like golden, um, it won't work because they'll be waterlogged. So never wash your mushrooms. So these have already been pre-brushed. I've been very organized today. What I'm going to do first is grab a little knife is I'm going to take away the um, stem bit, but I am going to be using them. So I'm a big believer in not wasting any anything in the kitchen because otherwise, well, it's just it's not good to waste. There's there are limited resources in the world. Why should we be wasting them? Okay, so Oops. So I'm just, I'm going to do four for the time being. I've got some spare mushrooms that I'm going to be using. Oops. Okay. I've got some spare mushrooms that I'm going to be using for the filling, and I just need a bowl. I'm just going to finally cut my mushrooms as finely as possible. So this is for the um, this is for the um, the stuffing. So I'm going to try my best to read the comments. Um, while I'm uh, doing this video. Now, clearly, I won't be able to read your comments while I'm slicing, just because, well, I value my fingers, let's put it that way. So I've got some mushroom, I think I'm gonna add another one because I need quite a bit of volume. And notice that I am, slicing them rather thinly first. What you want is you want this kind of size, okay? And um, the trick to, you know, often you see professionals uh, slicing with big knives and they super sharp. Well, the trick is always curve your fingers. <laughs> Don't. You don't want to cut like this. You don't want to, yeah, just curve your fingers like so. And basically the top of your fingers act as a guide. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you could put this in a food processor if you have one. I did think about using my food processor, but, um... I don't know where I put it. Oh no, it's in the cupboard. And, uh, and actually, for such small amounts, I just thought, you know what, I'll just do it by hand. It's just fine. Okay, right, so my mushrooms are finely minced. I'm going to put them in the bowl. Okay. Okay. Right. The other ingredients now I love garlic. I love garlic. I have garlic in everything. You can't go wrong with garlic. So 
So, I'm just going to take the skins off. These are nice plump garlics. What you might want to do, and if you can find it, this recipe is really good with um, smoked garlic. Okay? So I'm going to crush my garlic, and I'm just going to finely mince them. Like so. Now, don't worry about taking notes if you don't want to take notes. Um, I'll be posting the recorded version of this video on my YouTube channel, and I'll also include the entire ingredients list as well as the methodology so that you can try and replicate this at home. Okay, so I've got my minced garlic, which I'm going to place to one side. Um, as we're chopping up alliums, I may as well chop my red onion. Okay. It's always good when you're preparing food to have a kind of a system. Um, just to keep things tidy and neat. So, the mushrooms unfortunately came in this plastic thing. Um, so I use it to put all of my organic, um, waste. Now if you have a, a, um, you know, a place for, what is it called? Um, putting away your organic waste for composting, then that's great. Um, but it's just so that you have everything within arm's reach, which is actually really easy in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, here you go. So I'm going to finely slice these as well. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring the camera down so you can have a closer view. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take my knife and it's going to run uh, across across the, the first half of my onion, okay? So it'll go like this. And just be very careful not to catch your fingers. Okay, so you end up having um, an onion that has been sliced but not all the way to the end. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to slice into the onion this way, okay? Okay. And you should still have your onion together. Remember, you're not going all the way to the end. And then it's a simple chop, oops. across you'll end up having a large bit at the end but you know um, you can always go back but basically I've just diced them into this sort of size so I'm gonna keep them to one side and I'm gonna do the same with my other onion Right, so my onion and my garlic are chopped, which is what I wanted. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start cooking my uh, mushroom stuffing. And, oh no, before I do that, I am going to take my, my pistachios and I'm going to actually put these to one side. I'm actually going to crush them first. So I've got a 
clean tea towel. Okay, it's clean. <laughs> I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my pistachio nuts in here and spread them into a single layer and then I'm going to fold it over and where did I put my rolling pin? Okay, I can't find my rolling pin. Where did I put my, okay, I don't have my rolling pin so I'm going to just use the back of this pen. So I'm just going to lightly crush them, and the only reason why I'm doing this is to just make them a little bit smaller, and it will also release the essential uh, oils that are natural to these pistachio nuts. You can hear it crunching, it's actually quite satisfying. It's a bit like, you know when you get that bubble wrap? And you sit there and you're popping away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's the sort of consistency that I'm looking for. Okay. A little bit more. So, while I'm preparing my ingredients, I've actually preheated my oven on uh, its maximum heat, but I'll be cooking the mushrooms at about 160 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is now ready. I am going to add this to my mushrooms. I'm going to reserve a handful for later, maybe half a handful for later. Um, and remember, this looks like a lot of ingredients for four little mushrooms, but actually I'm going to be using part of it, for, uh, or half of it, to go in as a sort of a crumble, like a little topping to go into onto, onto my finished kedgeri. Right. So... The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to brush some light olive oil onto our mushrooms. Um, just a little bit on, I actually need a dish for this. It's so funny, so before I've, um, I went live today, I just thought to myself, okay, what do I need to have out on hand to, um, so I don't need to go looking for these things, and I thought I had everything planned out, <laughs> but, you know, you learn. Okay, so I'm just brushing some, some light olive oil on all over my mushroom. Not too much, just enough to coat. Okay, right. I'll leave that to one side. I'm gonna put my mushrooms up here and I'm going to grab my frying pan. I tell you, every surface is used in this kitchen all the time. <laughs> right, so while my pan is heating, are there any questions? I signal, hi! <laughs> wow, so there's quite a few of you. Um, right, so guys, just to, just to, um, uh, recap, I am making two dishes. I'm making stuffed mushrooms as well, um, as well as, um, kedgeri, which is a rice-based, a rice-based dish. I'm typically served, actually, at breakfast time, 
Um, the first time I ever had a Kedgeri, I was so in love with it. I just thought, oh, it's so full of flavor. I love Indian food anyways. It's something that is typically, um, that is uh, sort of blends British cuisine and Indian um, spices. And it's great as a brunch dish. You can, you can flake in some flake cod. Um, haddock is also really good in there. Um, this one is just utilizing the mushrooms and the um, the pistachio nuts, but um, you can make it your own. You can, you know, jazz it up however way you want. So my pan is getting nicely heated. Let's turn the attention to the pan. Okay, so a drop of olive oil. Again, I'm using light olive oil for this. Okay. So what I want to do first is I want to cook my onions. So what you're looking for when you're uh, sautéing your onions is that they start to turn translucent and uh, glossy. One way, one trick uh, to achieve that is by adding a little pinch of salt. Try, be careful not to put too much, because what you want to do is you don't want to over salt at the very beginning of your recipe. You want to taste as you go and adjust towards the end. Okay. So my onions are getting softer, which is what I want. I'm going to turn my heat down to a medium heat, and I'm going to add my garlic okay so at this stage it may be a little bit dry so what you can do is you can add a tiny knob of butter just to help it along If you don't like cooking with butter, what I would recommend doing is just adding a drop of water. Okay, so my garlic and my onions are looking a little bit translucent, which is nice, which is what I wanted. Now you'll notice that the pan, bottom of the pan is starting to get a little bit brown, and that's okay because brown means flavor, and when you deglaze later on, all that all that flavor will be released, which is great. Now, where did I put my mushrooms? Where did I put my mushrooms? Oh, they're here, with my pistachio nuts. Okay, so I'm now gonna add my mushrooms and my pistachio nuts. Don't we all love butter? I know, it's so bad for you. But, I mean, I just used the tiniest, the tiniest amount. So, in my pan, I've added my onions, my garlic, my pistachios, and my mushroom. Okay. I'm going to put some pepper. So it's looking a little bit dry, which is all right. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Okay, 
so, when I was coming up with this recipe, I was thinking, what am I going to do with the soy sauce? <laughs> because the soy sauce is kind of like the odd one out. And soy sauce, especially dark soy sauce, has, I mean, it's a, um, soy sauce is a fermented product. It's um, quite salty, and but once it cooks, it actually develops into a sort of caramelly, slightly caramelly uh, flavor profile. So I'm actually going to be using that instead of salt. Um, so just a little bit of soy, dark soy sauce. Mmm, okay. I think I'm going to add a little drop of water. Okay. The next ingredient that I'm going to place in there is a few chili flakes, dried chili flakes. Just a few. I mean, you can add more if you want to. There's no... I don't know if you noticed, but I don't really measure anything. <laughs> it's just the way I am. But for the recipe, I will put the measurements down for you. Okay. So I've got my mushroom, basically my mushroom stuffing is done. So I want to taste. Hmm. Hmm. Yum. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. You get a little kick from the chilies. You get that crunch from the um, from the pistachio nuts, and there's a soft sort of earthy hum that you get from the mushrooms. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna switch that off. Let me grab another spoon. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stuff my mushrooms. So I'm gonna use about a tablespoon worth. I mean, you can be a little bit more generous. I think if I had found bigger mushrooms, I would have, this would make a great, you know, uh, a, a little bit more substantial meal. But unfortunately, I couldn't get ha my hands on the bigger mushrooms. Okay. Oops. Right. So the rest of it, as I said, is going to be used as a crumb to go all over my kedgeri. So I'm just going to reserve it in this, in a different bowl. You don't want to, you don't need to clean your pan again because we're going to be using the same pan for the the other part of this dish, which is the kedgeri. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to bring my, my pan to heat again. And um, what I did earlier is I cooked some basmati rice. And um, so it's already been pre-cooked. I recommend doing that first anyways. But to show you the way that I like to cook my basmati rice is I use a strainer. And I've got about, um, I've got about, oh, I would say 50 grams of rice uh, that, I, that I've uh, cooked. But I'll put the rice in the strainer and then I'll wash it. I'll wash it until the liquid, oops, 
until the liquid runs dry. Uh, runs, runs clear. Not dry. What am I talking about? Runs clear. So in the first few seconds, the water will come out all sort of white. And then um, as you get rid of a lot of the excess starch, it will start to turn uh, clear. So that's what you want. Put this back to one side. Okay. So I'm just going to add a fraction more olive oil. This time I will be using my Butter, okay. <clears throat> so, what I want to do first is I want to fluff up my rice. And to fluff up, what you want to do is you want to use a fork and you just want to gently run across it. When you're cooking rice, um, what you want to do first is, after you've washed it and you've placed it in a pan, you fill it with um, cold water, and you allow for the water to go above, I would say, two thumbs worth above the, the line of the rice. And then you bring it up to a boil, and then I tend to reduce the heat to the absolute minimum. Sometimes, depending on the pan that I'm using, I will I will switch it off completely. But then I'll clamp a lid tightly on so that it uh, continues cooking and steaming. Okay. So my rice is nicely fluffed up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my spices. Okay, so I've got my star anise, I've got two bay leaves, I've got some cinnamon bark. Now if you don't have cinnamon bark, you can use uh, powdered cinnamon anyways, so that's fine. And then I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to reserve, I'm going to add my cumin seeds actually. I'm going to reserve the powdered s spices for a little bit later because I don't want them to burn. Be careful not to burn your spices because that isn't great. Uh, it will start to turn acrid very, very quick, uh, very bitter, very quickly. So mm, I can already start smelling the the spices, the fragrance. Okay, so I'm gonna add a portion of my mushrooms. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to slice my chili. I like things quite hot, so, but if you didn't want it so hot, you can remove the white bit and the seeds. But I like things hot, spicy, so. Okay, so there goes my chilies. Oops. My rice, my pan is on low, so I don't want things to burn. Right, next is my rice. So I'm gonna add, and I'm making enough for two people, but the recipe will be for four. So my rice has gone in there. And I'm mixing everything. And now I'm gonna add the rest of my spices. Now I'm sure there is a more traditional way of making this dish and this is probably not it. Oops, I'm making a bit of a mess. But it's the way I've done it. <laughs> And it seems to work. I've got some curry powder in here as well, so I'm going to add. Um, this is actually two tables, uh, two teaspoons worth. I'm going to add half of that. The 
It's so fragrant. Oh, I didn't put my mushrooms in the oven. Whoops. Yay, my mushrooms are in the oven. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. Let's pretend that they've been in the oven for a bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of water because it's, it is a bit dry. And that'll release some of that delicious flavor at the bottom. Okay. So my kedgeri is pretty much done. I'm going to taste. Mmm. So what you want also is you want a couple of that crisp those crispy bits from the rice. So So I'd leave it in the pan for a minute. Okay, while my rice is cooking, I'm just going to tie, clean up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to poach my egg. So I've got some water that I've boiled in the kettle, and what I want to do first is, there you go, what I want to do first is I want to salt my water, it's quite generous. Now I said earlier I didn't have uh, I couldn't find white wine vinegar, and usually I put a drop of white wine vinegar inside the water, in the water, when I'm poaching an egg. But I didn't have any. I couldn't find any. So, instead, I'm using the juice of a lemon. So I'm going to slice my lemon. Okay. And now, I'm going to add... My lemon. So for those of you who've just joined, I can see I can see some of you have just joined. I am making two dishes with uh, ingredients that have been submitted to me um, by my followers. Thank you very much, Jessica. So I'm making a kedgeri with a poached egg and a pistachio crumb that's going to go on top. And then I'm also going to be making um, stuffed mushrooms, which are already in the oven at the moment. Okay. So back to the egg. What I might do is I might swap these over. Because this is pretty much done. Okay. Hopefully you can see. Yeah. Okay. I'm so pleased with the turnout. There's quite a few of you. Um, yeah, no, it's fun. Right, don't forget, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to do so. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to make some, um, try and answer some of your questions. Okay. So my water is coming to a boil, uh, coming to a simmer. If you want to speed up the simmering. Just put a just put a lid. Just put a lid on top. Okay. Okay. Seriously, this kedgeri. I'm so glad it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. Okay. Right. So that's gonna stay to one side. So with the egg, it's a bit. I mean, some people, when you're poaching, when you're poaching eggs, some people swear by the swirling method, um, which is the method that I prefer to use. Some people, um, the the fresher the egg, the the better it holds, um, obviously. Um, but the first thing that I did was I, in my wa in my water, I put a hand, um, some salt, some sea salt, and some lemon juice. 
and um, I'm going to drop my egg in a midnight. I need a spoon. Okay, right. Okay, I think we're good. So it's not quite a boil, it's just um, really hot. So, I'm just swirling the water so it creates a little bit of a spin. My egg is going to go into a spin cycle. Okay. Like so. And it's going to drop a little drop in, like so. Okay. <clears throat> and then what you need is a slotted spoon, which I have here. You can push the sides in to sort of form it, but that's not necessary. I mean, some people will drop their egg and what you'll see, actually, what you start to see now is that the water is starting to come to a boil. You don't want it to boil because otherwise the big bubbles are going to break the yolk and then you'll have to start all over again. So while this is ready, I'm going to finish prepping the rest of the, uh, the finishing touches so that I can start serving. I'm going to check out my mushrooms which are in here. Ooh, they're looking good. Okay, my mushrooms are in there. Whoops, sorry. <clears throat> right, so let me get a plate. Try and bring this a little bit closer. Okay, so my rice is ready. I'm gonna toast The remaining, so I'm going to toast the rest of the pistachios in a dry pan. There's nothing in there. Get rid of this. Okay. Let me check on my egg. I mean, I like the egg, I think it's pretty much ready, okay. I like the egg to be runny, so once it once it's ready, it can just, when you slice into it, it just oozes, oozes. Okay, so my egg is ready, and I'm going to place it to the side, like so. Okay. And I am going to serve. So obviously, just discard the the cinnamon. I mean, this is quite a rustic dish. It's nothing fancy, but it's so delicious. It's full of flavor. I just love it. Okay. So I've got my little mound of mush of um, rice. <clears throat> so I've tidied up my e I've tidied up my egg, so I've um, just removed some of the excess just for aesthetic reasons. I mean, you don't have to. And I'm going to drop my egg on top, like that.
I'm going to sprinkle whoops, some of that leftover stuffing just on top, like that, just a few. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of my freshly toasted pistachio nuts. If you could see the state of my kitchen from the back, <laughs> this is pretty. And then uh, I'm just going to finely chop. Where's my? I'm gonna finely chop um, some coriander and a little bit of mint. I love mint and coriander together. I, th I find they go so well together. Okay. Just just roughly chopped. It doesn't have to be precise or anything. We're not we're not looking for Michelin grade cuisine. We're just looking for something delicious and wholesome. Whoops, sorry. One handed cooking is so is not easy. <laughs> okay, and there you go. So here you have the kedgeri with the pesto crumb. And check out that egg. Oh, yes. Ooze. It oozes. Exactly what we like. Okay. Let's go and look. It looks penned. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> What's penned? I thought penned was a place. Okay. And then I've got my mushrooms. Just here. Penge. <laughs> I'm really curious as to what penge means. So, I mean, you could actually just serve them on a plate. Whoop. They're hot. They're super hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you could serve them on a plate, um, like so. You know, with a little, it can be just like a, a little starter for someone. So here I've got. <clears throat> and what you can do is you can add the same sort of herbs on top, just a little bit. Um, what would be nice in this is a little drizzle, just a finishing oil. So here I'm going to be using some sesame oil, but just a little drizzle on top. Is everything switched off? Yeah. And that's it. So let me just grab. So here I've got my stuffed mushrooms. And then I have the kedgeri with the poached egg and um, the pistachio crumb on top. And that's it. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. It was certainly fun and uh, different for me. Uh, usually I record my episodes. I edit them and then I post them. This is live, so it's a different way of doing things. I'm actually really shiny because I'm hot. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was uh, great to see you guys and I hope that you will join me next Thursday when I will be using somebody else's ingredients. In fact, I will be using uh, my friend Omar's ingredients and his were olives, bell peppers, cheese, short crust pastry, and what else is there? There's something else. Did I say olives? I think I did. But uh, yeah, so this was really fun. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next Thursday. Same time, same place in my tiny kitchen.